Comedy Time presents Comedy Brew, a delicious mix of short, fast, funny, featuring today's most hilarious comedians. So crank up the volume and switch off the light, and get ready to enjoy the sweet, fresh taste of comic goodness. Hi, I'm Rob F. Martinez, and I'm glad you could join us at Comedy Time when you could be doing something a lot less productive and useful, like reading, studying, your job, major drag. We just wanted to take some time out to thank you. Enjoy your next comic. If you guys watch the news, they're saying that Latinos are terrorists now, really? That we're a threat to Homeland Security, right? You're never gonna see a Mexico in the name of Guadalajara and try to blow himself up. You're never gonna see that. Ah, you ever hear that? You ever hear that? It's a Latino hater battle cry. Ah, you ever hear that? I heard you got a job. Ah, you know? I heard you're having a baby. Ah. I heard you have cancer. Ah. You know? White people, you do it too. Dude, I heard your equity's all messed up. Oh, you know? <laughs> I can't go to Starbucks no more because they're nosy, right? The next time you go to Starbucks, they're like, what's your name? I'm like, girl, I don't even know you, all right? Just give me my coffee, okay? But I'm a hater, I always give them a different name. They're like, Morpheus, Morpheus. Mocha Frappuccino, Morpheus, Morpheus. Leonidas, Leonidas. This is my coffee, Ah! Uh! Today, latte, tomorrow, mocha, uh! ah. And nobody buys books anymore, right? Nobody does, nobody ever buys a book. The next time you go to Barnes and Nobles or Borders, nobody's ever buying a book, huh? Everybody just laying around like, yeah, this is my favorite book. Yeah, I would buy this, but what for? I'll just come here every single day. Thank you. <laughs> I'm spoiled all these kids with all these toys, right? These kids got good toys now. Little nephew has a Guitar Hero thing. Spend like six hundred dollars. Like dun 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 dun. I'm gonna get high score, Theo. You don't know nothing. Dun 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 dun. Why don't you just buy a band? It's a lot cheaper. You don't know nothing. Leave me alone. Dun 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 dun. It's not just that. You know, I have a son. He has his little PSP games, little Nintendo DS. I don't know if you guys have kids. They're like squirrels, huh? All day, right? They're like. Right? So you're just jealous because you didn't have this when you were a kid. I'm like, no fool. All I had was that piece of paper. Remember that? Remember that? Pick a number, pick a number. How about that other game with a string? You used to cut your friend's circulation. Stop it, you're hurting my arm! And I'm not gonna lie, I used to love tetherball. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'd be like, My brother did that so much, he's gay now. He's like, I, I, oh. <laughs> He's a different kind of gay guy, man. Yeah, he's a mechanic, okay, it's sad. He's like, oh my God, your pistons are so thrash, like that. Your radiator's going You need a lube job. You know? <laughs> he didn't come out of the closet, he came out of the garage, all right? Screwdriver. Ah. Hey, thanks for watching Comedy Time. I heard this next comic is extremely entertaining. I hope she's funny, too. What's happening? <laughs> Woo! I love it. Yeah, y'all did like me. You spent some gas to come out here, huh? I spent a whole tank of gas. I need $15 so I can get the hell back on. Gas is too damn high to just be going places for no damn reason. 
I mean, I get girlfriends calling me up talking about, can you give me a ride to Inglewood? I give you five dollars for some gas. Bitch, five dollars won't get me to the pump or the gas station. I can't get from pump one to pump two on five dollars, bitch. I got friends that live far away. You know, my girlfriend live in Lancaster. Talking about, how come you don't ever come out here and visit me? Cause you ain't sent a helicopter to pick me up, bitch. <laughs> I feel like this, I feel like this. If you relocate from LA to some far off land like Fontana, I consider you gone. <laughs> They'd be like, where your girlfriend? And she in Fontana, she gone. Mm-mm. That's gone. And what's up with our schizophrenic weather these days? What the hell is this? It's hot as hell during the day, cold as hell at night. I almost wore a fur, fur coat with some flip flops tonight. What the hell? You don't know how to dress when you leave the house no more, huh? Look at her, look, look, I quit wearing fur because I got approached by a PETA protester. I had a little cheetah fur coat on one day and this woman walked up like, excuse me, is that real fur? I said, oh hell yeah, it is real. <laughs> Shoot, you wanna touch it? <laughs> I got this at the alley, <laughs> Shoot. Shoot, Sergio hooked me up, you don't know. She said, do you realize an animal had to die for you to wear that jacket? I said, well, he should have ran. <laughs> this is Cheetah, they the fastest animals on the planet. He should have got away, shit. <laughs> Can't help it if I'm wearing the jacket of a slow Cheetah, forget it. You know what they say, survival of the fittest. <laughs> this one fitting up for a size nine. Thanks for watching Comedy Time. And his next comic has been telling jokes since he could talk. His material has improved a lot since then, though. Watch and see. I'm from San Diego. Give it up for San Diego, or not, that's fine, either way. I'm from San Diego. Down in San Diego at our beaches now, we have, uh, we have tsunami evacuation route signs. Telling people which way to run, in case there's a tsunami. All it is is a sign that's like two feet by two feet, it says tsunami evacuation route, and all it is is an arrow that points east. <laughs> that's it, that's the whole sign. I'm not sure who this sign is for. I don't care if you're a tourist, you're not familiar with the area, but if you're standing in the beach and you see something big, wet, and mean coming this way, <laughs> and you don't know that you should probably turn around and run the other way, then you know what, we as a society, we don't need you. We're better off without you. We don't need that guy voting or filling out the census. We're better off. No, dude, you're good. I just can't wrap my mind around the type of person that would be standing there in the beach, looking out at the water, seeing a big wave coming and just like, oh. I'm befuddled. I don't know what to do. Watch out, honey, it's a rogue wave. You better get in a doorway or I'm gonna stop, drop, and roll. Hopefully this thing will just go over me. <laughs> Signs made for dumb people is what I'm getting at. I'm not saying I'm smart. A few months back, we had a big earthquake down in San Diego and I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I didn't jump into a doorway or get under a table. I hopped on Facebook, updated my status, let everyone know about it. <laughs> earthquake, exclamation point. You know what the sad thing was? I wasn't even the first one in the newsfeed. I was like the third one down. I was like, man, you guys are good. The ground is still shaking. You guys are, your blackberries are better than mine. That is amazing. I didn't do anything today getting ready for this. Just watch some TV. That's what I do. I don't work. I just watch TV. You know what my least favorite channel is on TV is PBS. PBS is like the worst shows on television, but somehow they get the balls to blame you for it. After every one of their shows, it always ends the same way. It's like, this program was brought to you by viewers like you. <laughs> I'm at home in my underwear, like, don't blame that on me. I... <laughs> How dare you? I had nothing to do with that awful episode of Mr. Rogers. Like, what are you... What are you doing to me right now? <laughs> Dude, I once did that joke, and this lady popped up. She's like, How dare you? Say something bad about Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is a great show for kids. No, it's not. 
Mr. Rogers is an awful show for kids. Any show that tries to get little kids to trust a postman named Mr. McFeely <laughs> is not a good show for kids. Remember that guy? He'd come in with a mustache. Speedy delivery. Hey, keep him away from the kids. How about that? Episode one. You're watching Comedy Time, and we consider ourselves the ambassador of jokes. We should probably invent some sort of uh, salute or wear a badge, but for now, please welcome our next comic. The human brain's not fully developed till 25 years of age. I know that's true. That's true. Because people under 25 are the only ones that'll put a $3,000 sound system into a $1,000 car. <laughs> yeah. 19-inch rims on a 98 Honda Accord. <laughs> that is a good look, SpongeBob. <laughs> Maybe you put a non-functioning wing across the back to finish the whole idiot package. <laughs> Ever watch them on their cell phones? They can't put them down. It's like somebody calls, somebody texts, somebody texts, somebody texts, somebody calls, somebody calls. Jesus, focus. They'll have ADD or something. I don't understand the obsession with all the text messages. You ever take a cell phone away from a 20 something? They don't know what to do. They look like they have Parkinson's. I'm gonna have to learn how to talk to people. <laughs> My wife and I went to the mall recently. We have two teenagers. The plan was all four of us are going to go different directions, then we're going to meet up later. Both my kids had forgotten their phone. They go, how are we going to meet later? I said, well, we're going to go back in school, kids, and go old school. This is called making a plan. <laughs> at 2.20, we'll all be in front of Macy's at the same time. They're like, well, that'll work. It was like I was Lewis and Clark or something. There's a public service campaign taking place in Seattle right now. It's on the buses, it's in the newspapers, it's on the radios, telling young people, you cannot text 911. You have to call and use your voice. <laughs> Apparently, it's been a problem. <laughs> OMG, someone's in the house. I am not R-O-F-L-M-A-O! <laughs> they use initials for everything at the end of a funny sentence, LOL. You know, we used to put initials at the end of a funny sentence. We used to write H-A-H-A. -H -A. It's pronounced ha-ha and it stood for ha-ha. I sent a text to my daughter the other day. She's 14. I sent about three a month to show her how hip I was. I finished it with BFF, TTFN, and then I wrote DAD. <laughs> she comes home from school. I go, did you get my text message? She goes, what does DAD stand for? <laughs> Stands for dad. She said, oh, I thought it was dumbass dude. You guys are great. Enjoy the rest of the show, Ryder. Thanks. What's up, Comedy Time? I'm Kirk Zipfel. Let's kick back, enjoy the next comic, and try to forget about your scorching toenail fungus. I get a lot of crazy questions, though, especially in Holland. People are like, oh my God, Michelle, like what? What's your, you know, what's your nation? What's happening? What's your nationality? And I'm Jamaican and Haitian, and people are like, oh my God, Jamaican and Haitian? What part of Puerto Rico is that? Like, what? <laughs> and that's so crazy. I don't think I look Puerto Rican because mm, I ain't got no kids. But um, <laughs> whoa, who said it? I said it. Shut up. <laughs> Condoms are free, anyways. <laughs> people are like, you're not Spanish. You're black. I'm like, hey. They're like, you're black, but how'd you get so light? Like it's a recipe or something. <laughs> like, ooh, girl, what did you put in it? Cause it is delicious. <laughs> I know, I'm like, start that Roma. <laughs> 
So let me break it down, y'all. I'm black, you're in a hot got so light. It's very easy, it's called colonialism. Okay, I'll wait till next February. Um, and it's so crazy, I've been to parts uh, of the United States, like in the Midwest, uh, where I've met white people who are like, I don't know, Michelle, all black people kind of look alike to me. I'm like, oh my God, you said that out loud. <laughs> And I've met black people who are like, you know, Michelle, all white folks look alike to me. I'm like, read a book. <laughs> and you know what, guys? It's not what you say, it's how you say it sometimes. Like one night I was doing karaoke, a little tipsy, because that's how I do. What? Shut up. <laughs> Don't judge me. And this really drunk Asian guy came up to me and he was like, oh, girl, you know who you look like? <laughs> you know who you look like? <laughs> I'm like, who? He's like, Lenny Kravitz. Hey, I'm Suna Bilstead for Comedy Time. This next comedian owes me a hundred bucks, so enjoy their next joke, because it might be their last. <laughs> So like, when I, I'm always excited when I see like Asians at comedy clubs. I'm like, what's up, we got some Asians in the house? And they always laugh like, <laughs> Come on, Asians, Asians in the house, make some noise. <laughs> it's because Asians, we're the most self-conscious people on earth. For the past five years with my boy, DJ Jacob Alvarez, we've been DJing weddings every weekend. And Asians are the most self-conscious people on earth, especially Koreans, man. Korean people, we only dance when, we're, when it's pitch dark and when we're drunk. All the Asians come and dance, and one time we accidentally turned the light on, everybody ran back to the table, they're like, no light! <laughs> Asians are like bugs at weddings, you know? <laughs> we're self-conscious, and Asian people were the most giving, considerate, passive-aggressive people on earth. Let me explain, all right? We're taught, when there's one last piece of food, Asian people are taught, never take that last piece, because it's rude, right? Don't take that last piece. It's cool, we leave it there. We leave it there for five minutes, and then we cut it in half. And we cut it in half, and we cut it in half. Until there's one little piece left, we leave it there for another five minutes. Finally, someone takes it, and everybody's like, selfish, man. That guy always takes the last piece. Like, we're taught to offer to pay, it's rude not to offer to pay. You know, our parents are like, always offer to pay. So our parents are always like, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. They're elbowing each other, I'll pay. So, you know, we're always taught to offer to pay. So the first time we take our non-Asian friend out, we're like, hey man, I'll pay. They're like, thanks. We're like, oh, okay. I see how it is. I thought there'd be one counter offer, but uh, I guess you're selfish. So Asians are really self-conscious, giving, considerate, passive aggressive people. So I host a show called Collaboration, this big Asian talent show all across the country. And these Asian rappers come out, and they're like, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. And there isn't a single hand in the air, right? <laughs> there were 2,000 Asian people going, I don't want to be the only one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not one hand. That's why if I was an Asian rapper, I would get everybody on my side. I would come out like If you're feeling me, sit still. If you're feeling me, sit still. Just breathe, blink, stare, and think. Keep your hands down, keep your hands down, keep your hands down, keep your hands down. Yo, one, two, three, into the four. If you think I'm the best, just breathe through your nose, breathe through your mouth, breathe some air. To me, that's the same as your hand in the air, is your hand in the air, no one's down by your side. That's how I know you're feeling my rhyme. When I do nothing, you do nothing. Oh, heck yeah, that's how we do it, my Asian people. That's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm Joel Bryant, and you're watching Comedy Time, and I am jealous of you. I mean, I just, I'm just introducing this next clip, but you, you gotta watch it. I mean, that's awesome. If I, if I could just take one second and switch places with you for the next few minutes, I would. I am so jealous right now. <sighs> So I'm on my way here and I stopped at like 7-Eleven or Circle K and I'm not sure, I don't, I don't remember, it, it was really convenient. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and I'm at the register and I'm making my purchase and right there at the counter they have extends <laughs> extends the male enhancement product at the counter. <laughs> like it's some kind of an impulse item <laughs> yeah I have a hot dog a, a slurpee and a bigger penis <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> Extends. It's supposed to enhance a male's performance. What do you guys think so far? <laughs> My wife and I just, just celebrated our 30th anniversary. Thank you. I don't, don't really need a, a bigger penis, do I? <laughs> 30 years of marriage. I, I don't need a penis at all, do I? Actually, our, our sex life is magic. 30 years, magic. It's disappeared. <laughs> it, it's not her fault, it, it's my magic wand. We don't have any children, no kids. We, we have two dogs and my mother-in-law. And we're thinking about having the three of them put to sleep. <laughs> I'm kidding, we'll, we'll probably keep the dogs. 